LEADME, leading platform from European citizens, industries, academia and policymakers in media accessibility, CA19142. COST, European Cooperation in Science and Technology. Second Colnet Open Seminar, TRADAP, a virtual site for audiovisual translation resources. Dr. Maria del Mar Ojea Pozo, Universidad de Córdoba, Spain, 10th May 2021. Organization, Lead Me, Cost Action, CA 19142. Collaborative network of early career researchers in audiovisual translation and media accessibility, Colnet. Department of Translation and Interpreting, Universidad de Alicante. Lead Me, Colnet. Universidad de Alacant, Universidad de Alicante. Welcome to this second Colnet free online seminar session. Um, today we're having a really interesting session about Tradab. Maybe you've heard about this uh, site, maybe you haven't. But the title is Tradab, a virtual site for audiovisual translation resources. Uh, this is um, a seminar organized by the Colnet um, Collaborative Network of Early Career Researchers in Audiovisual Translation and Media Accessibility. And this session is organized within the Cost Action Lead Me uh, KOCA 19142, funded by the Horizon 2020 Framework Program of the European Union. So we really want to thank uh, this Cost Action for helping us. And also, uh, this session will be recorded and uploaded to their uh, YouTube uh, channel, also with subtitles for everyone, everyone to follow the session afterwards. So uh, once again, thank you to the Cost Action for helping us, organizing and supporting us uh, with this seminar. And now let me introduce you to the key speaker today, to our uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Maria del Mar Ojea Pozo. We're really happy at the University of Alicante. Uh, this is something we were expecting. Um, Hopefully next time that'll be in person and not uh, an online session, but at least we can have her today. Um, let me just give you a, a, a really quick, sorry, some people are joining us, yes, uh, more people. So let me just give you um, a couple of, of uh, details about her uh, information. Uh, she holds a BA in Modern Languages and Translation and Interpreting by the University of Suffolk, Suffolk at UK. Um, and a PhD in translation by the University of Córdoba. She's a lecturer and researcher at the University of Córdoba and focuses her research on audiovisual translation. She combines her work with her, the professional practice of audiovisual translation, which she has been doing since she completed her postgraduate studies. She's the editor of the journal Translators, International Journal and Translation of Translation and Interpreting and coordinator of the TRADAP project that is going to be described uh, today for all of us. So thank you so much, Mar, for joining us today and for being so kind of uh, giving all this information about Prada. Uh, and once again, welcome to the University of Alicante, somehow. And the floor is yours. Um, welcome and enjoy. All of us uh, are going to enjoy this session. I'm really, I'm really uh, sure about that. So um, we're going to listen to the presentation first, and then we'll have some time to ask questions and to share um, opinions and doubts uh, at the end of the session, okay? So once again, thank you everybody and enjoy the session. And Mar, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Carla, for the presentation. And you know, it's always a pleasure to, to be with uh, the team from the University of Alicante, even virtually. And well, uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here today. And um, I hope uh, you enjoy this open seminar. Before we begin, I would like to thank uh, also the Colnet Group for organizing these seminars and the University of Alicante, again, for having me. And especially, of course, Carla Botella for the great work she has done and uh, for arranging, the, arranging this seminar and Blanca Arias for the initiative. So then welcome to the, this second seminar of the Colnet Group, which is titled Trada, a virtual site for the audiovisual translation resources. <clears throat> so let's see what's uh, in the presentation for today. 
And well, before we begin, I would like uh, um, to set up the ob objectives um, that we pursued uh, for the plan for innovation and good teaching practices for 2019 and 2020 of the University of Córdoba. This project was undertaken to address the, imp uh, the need to improve uh, the acquisition of documentary, thematic and translation skills in the field of audiovisual translation, always in the context of learning and research. So let's see a brief introduction, uh, introduction about the project. It was carried out by the, by the Learning Innovation Team 169, whose members are also part of the research uh, group Orient's HUM 940, and uh, also some former students of the degree of, uh, in translation and interpreting who were honorary collaborators at our department. In this way, we, we could have their point of view and trying to meet their, their necessities and concerns on, about the, their future career. So the project was designed in response to the need to compile a bibliography that could could be used to, as a support for final degree dissertations, and as well as to create a collaborative and multimedia learning environment that has proved to be uh, perfect for motivating students in the current pandemic situation. Furthermore, given that audiovisual translation um, is taught in the final year in our university, it seemed more than worthwhile to provide some connection with the professional world. Um, fortunately, we can say that we have achieved some of the goals set at the beginning of the project, and those are to provide a site uh, hosting bibliographic resources, technical and audiovisual material, which is systemat systematically uh, classified and arranged for education, as well as for the practice and research in the field of audiovisual translation. Also, we wanted to bring new audiovisual materials and resources of our own creation, such as webinars, infographies, uh, tutorials, and so on and so forth, and to disseminate, share, and put into practice the compilation of such material in the educational context. So to whom was the project targeted? Um, it was specifically targeted to our students of the degree in translation and interpreting and the degree in film and cultural studies at the University of Córdoba. Um, and it was used as a complementary tool in the AVT course taught in both degrees. But we also aim to reach researchers, translators, especially uh, audiovisual translators, and other users who might be interested in the topics dealt with, such as films, dubbing, subtitling, accessibility, and among others. So uh, let's see some information about the website. And why did we want to design a website to be used in the classroom? We wanted to bring a new perspective to the 2.0 tools, um, also to foster a new e-learning and self-learning environment that without being aware of it, uh, was going to be settled among all of us in the uh, present academic year. So according to Wang, Hu, and Yu, uh, Web 2.0 is not only a technology, but a way to understand, uh, to understand the social change we are living today. So the attitude to it will be crucial in the relationship we build with or towards it. The website is available only in Spanish by now and was created with WordPress. It is hosted by the University of Córdoba and open to all users. We made sure that the interface of, uh, is intuitive and visually appealing. So we must say that all contributions are welcome um, and any user, not only from the University of, of Córdoba, uh, but from all over the world, who is willing to share any information about their website, studies, or even to publish any post, infographic, uh, interview, may contact me and I will be happy to collaborate with all of them. So here's a short view for a, a short video for a quick view on the main site.
So you can see that you have access to all the different sections of the website and the latest posts. And well, we'll see some more uh, during the presentation. So the project was um, aimed to offer uh, students, researchers, and junior translators a classification of resources and materials that may be useful for the study and practice of audiovisual translation, as well as other related areas. Therefore, we worked from three different approaches, learning, research, and practice. In terms of learning, we focused on EDT in translation studies, multidisciplinarity and transversality, multimedia and collaborative environment, ABT as a learning tool, and e-learning. Regarding research, we understand that such resources are mainly used by students who are doing their first or initial research works. So we also noticed that in many cases, students did not focus their dissertations only on ABT, but on linguistic or specialized aspects of, uh, of the audiovisual text. For example, we have students doing their dissertations on uh, specialized language in TV series featuring characters who work in a particular profession. Therefore, we wanted to facilitate their work by including basic studies on AVT for, uh, for those less familiar with the discipline and also cross-disciplinary studies. We must say that the existing sources are endless and new key, uh, studies keep coming out all the time, so we must constantly enlarge and update the sections dedicated to research. According to practi uh, regarding practice, we aimed a connection with the professional world, so we try to publish uh, some information that may be useful for the actual practice of uh, audiovisual translation and also organize some special activities uh, where our students can meet professional translators. Um, I know the, this is complicated now, so it was our plan, but we actually uh, managed to organize just one event, uh, but we hope we can do it in the future face to face. So let's know more about ABT as uh, learning, um, regarding learning. Um, if we consider it a booming discipline, uh, we can say that audiovisual translation has become one of the most dynamic disciplines in translation studies due to the uh, technological development. And it has experienced an unprecedented surge in interest that has made possible to widen the avenues for training and research. In the Spanish context, it has been, uh, become especially necess necessary to study audiovisual translation due to the amount of translated audiovisual content that has grown dramatically since the arrival of streaming services that provide foreign productions translated by one or more modalities and languages. Moreover, this boom has led to the need for a greater and better professionalization of the activity, which is why the number of universities, including this specialization in their courses, has increased, as well as the volume of publications, conferences, research, uh, research groups, um, and other activities, provoking what is called by Zabal Beascoa a theoretical evolution of audiovisual translation. But to what do we attribute today's boom in audiovisual translation? According to Mayoral, there are several factors that have been decisive in promoting the study of the, this discipline, among which we may highlight the multiplication of television channels, the increase in virtual activities such as uh, e-learning, and the emergence of digital platforms, video on demand service, services, uh, and so on. In addition to this, I would like to point out an, a number of recent trends that uh, have contributed further to the expansion of audiovisual translation in both the academic and professional contexts. And those are the growing popularity and num a number of users of streaming services, which um, those providing foreign and national content, 
along with that, the DAP and uh, subtitled versions in different languages. Also, the establishment of associations of audiovisual translators, adapters, and localizers, as well as forums that uh, safeguard the needs and interests of the sector's professionals. And finally, the increase in the number of uh, events related to audiovisual translation, which serve as a meeting point for researchers uh, and tra translators, uh, such as conferences, seminars, webinars, face-to-face -face and virtual events, talks, workshops, and so forth. Considering ABT as a training process, um, we need to know what skills a good translator needs to develop so we can provide an adequate uh, training to our students. According to Carroll, a good translator, a translator should possess a good competence in their mother tongue, creative writing, passion for films, the ability to adjust language to images, basic computer skills, interest in technology, an eye for details, and finally, a sense of perfectionism. Also, Hurtado points out the need to develop uh, what she calls the translator competence, which she explains in six sub-competencies, communicative, extralinguistic, physiophysiological, psychophysiological, sorry, uh, professional uh, of transfer and strategic competence. Of course, an audiovisual translator must also possess not only the skills of a translator, but also the skills of a cine uh, literate film viewer. So uh, they must be capable of reading the film text, uh, its characters and the re their relationships uh, and the filmic devices used to convey meaning from the mind of a filmmaker and not only uh, from a linguistic uh, mind. So based on these characteristics, we wanted to develop a tool that would allow our students to acquire such skills during the training process. While there are many relevant and truly interesting studies, not many of them connect audiovisual translation and other forms of translate, uh, translation. Um, uh, Thabal Beascoa, um, indeed, notes that uh, ABT presents traditional problems posed by written translation, such as the translation of proper names, dialects, metaphors, humor, multilingualism, stylistics and rhetoric, register, terminology, phraseology, cultural elements, etc. Even though the, the, this multidisciplinary aspect has not been addressed in depth, AVT has proven to be an excellent tool in terms of foreign language learning, motivation, acquisition of vocabulary, and textual comprehension. We have found a large num uh, number of studies examining the beneficial effects of using different modalities of audiovisual translation for foreign language learning, including those by King, Mayer, Neves, Talaban, Socoli. Uh, Zabal Beasco and Funtana, Diaz Tintas, Incalcaterra and Lertola, and Lertola, among others. And we cannot list all of them. It is worth mentioning that ma the many, many papers published by the research group Tradit that you can find on their website. So if you are interested, interested on uh, audiovisual translation for, for foreign language learning, you should have a look at their website. And then, according to Mayer, people learn from verbal and visual information processing channels. So when words and pictures are presented together on screen, the learner's uh, cognitive capacity increases. Therefore, we thought that ABT could become, Alex, an excellent tool, uh, tool to be used for acquiring different skills needed in the translation and interpreting courses. In this respect, King explains that it is a refreshing learning experience for students who need to take a break from drill practices and replace it with something realistic and different to the traditional textbook-oriented textbook teaching. 
So visual information together with the uh, oral speech can be a key input for the students immersion in any specialized subject. After some experiment carried out in different courses, such as scientific translation and intercultural translation, we confirm that uh, the, the positive reception of audiovisual translation as our students showed high interest uh, and motivation results and also a better attitude towards the activity, a higher concentration and therefore a better learning experience. So we decided to apply these theories to different translation and interpreting classrooms in order to find out if audiovisual translation would bring better learning results. And these were the main topics we dealt with, comic, book and translation, audiovisual translation, medical terminology in television serials, and also in the translation of scientific documentaries, the interculturality of gastronomic translation, uh, the translation of legal text within audiovisual translation, and um, the translation of children's books for literary uh, translation, the adaptation of songs, accessibility, uh, interpreting training based on uh, the use of audiovisual material, the use of intercultural uh, audiovisual material um, and corpus, and finally, subtitling in the learning of poetic translation. So this are the authors of each of these studies. The topics mentioned in the previous sheet were exposed through different multimedia materials that were implemented on the website. We believe that transferring information in a visually attractive, brief and direct way would appeal to users who often seek immediacy and quick way of acquiring knowledge. Also, we cannot forget that we are addressing a generation of digital natives who feel comfortable with, uh, in a uh, multimedia environment. These materials would allow us to perform activities uh, based on flipped learning, that is to say, a methodological model that reduces the time spent in the classroom on the simplest uh, cognitive processes to emphasize more complex activities such as debates, problem solving, or face-to-face -face teacher -student, uh, student interaction. We also, uh, also wanted to foster autonomous self-learning, uh, as we are teaching a profession uh, where a large part, part of the time people work alone and it is necessary to be efficient and even autodidactic. Finally, we provided activities based on gamification that were carried out in the ABT classroom and they were very positively, uh, positively valued by the students who acknowledged in a survey uh, that they felt motivated and able to better retain the theoretical information thanks to these additional activities. So let's first see an overview of, of the posters published in the preliminary version of the website. And now we'll see one of the mini games created to strengthen some of the basic uh, subtitling protocols. So I have to change the screen now. Sorry, it's just a moment. So the game is embedded in the website. It's just the first one. Uh, we created two of them um, just to see if they were um, well uh, received by the students. Again. Well, as you can see, just uh, practice the protocols. Uh, and that's all. <laughs> 
So it was a very simple game, but uh, su surprisingly, uh, students uh, liked it very much. Or they... Okay, so it's... Am I sharing the screen now? Yeah. Okay. Then we also created a um, YouTube channel linked to the Tradab website. And the main fun uh, function of this channel is to, to provide a space to host the audiovisual educational material that is embedded in the website. Uh, but we also use it occasionally to share the projects of students who voluntarily lend them to us. In this way, Tradab could serve as a kind of window into the professional world for them. Uh, in the video of the screen, um, one of our students uh, wanted to share her practice of audio, uh, audio description of a frozen dessert trailer. And this uh, exercise was followed by a post published by her on their blog. So, like, Aparece el muñeco de nieve, hola. hola. Le sorprende una flor entre la nieve. La huele. La huele. Su nariz de zanahoria sale disparada. Well, then regarding the bibliography finder, we now have um, 268 entries and hope to keep adding more works, as we know that publications on ABT are growing more and more every day. The works register contain the following data, um, authors of the work, title of the publication, topic, or the visual translation modality, if involved, uh, theoretical aspect of translation studies dealt with, uh, professional aspect addressed, if applicable, full reference, year of publication, website where it can be found, and some tags that will be used for filtering our search. So the browser is very intuitive and you can filter your search by keywords, as I said before, related to any of those details that I have just mentioned. So it may be helpful for dissertations on many different topics. In this section dedicated to practice, we include two main sections, one uh, to resources and the other one to podcast. In resources, we listed uh, websites related to languages, translation, and film that may be useful for audiovisual translation, as well as blogs for, from professional audiovisual translators, websites for open, open training, and, and information, of, uh, on so, uh, information on software related to audiovisual translation, which includes information on where to download them, their compatibility with different operating systems and their cost. In the podcast, uh, podcast section, we have embedded the podcast on audiovisual translation presented by Damian Santilli, Blanca Arias and Guillermo Parra. So you can see it on our website, of course, on, uh, from their website too, but um, you can listen it to, from here. So let's see uh, a brief presentation on the, of the resources section. So you have all the websites, and tools, and blogs on translation. And then you have the podcast. In addition, we created a blog in which we periodically publish posts and news of interest to encourage students of the visual translation to participate and learn new skills. We also aim to stimulate their curiosity and knowledge about cinema, the audiovisual industry, cultural aspects of films, films and series, 
and translation as a vehicle for disseminating audiovisual contents, as well as uh, uh, regarding any fields of expertise. Um, we decided to implement into the AVT course this blog from an open and responsive approach, so all students were invited to participate. We must say that the blog was created before the COVID crisis, so we did not plan to use it in such an open perspective until then. And then, due to the pandemic situation, we needed new ways to motivate learners and facilitate their communication in a collaborative virtual environment. So the response was quite positive, and we are happy to say that until now we have published uh, 35 posts during the present academic year, and most of them are written by students. According to Marine, blogs provide contemporary, flexible, interactive, and dynamic learning opportunities as they facilitate communication, build critical, abstract, and um, analytical thinking, incorporate cutting edge uh, issues, virtual uh, resources and materials, and promote creativity. So that seemed to be a perfect tool for acquiring the necessary skills to be a good audiovisual translator. We also organized uh, thematic activities after the creation of the project. For the publication of the website, we held a public presentation and we had an audiovisual translator as our guest speaker, Matteo Montaño, who described to our students the day-to-day -day work of an audiovisual translator. We also published posts based on um, AVT students' responses to open discussion in discuss discussions in Moodle, such as the Christmas or Halloween series of posts. And finally, it is worth mention mentioning the special activity organized for the 8th of March to celebrate Women's Day. This initiative was launched by um, some, of the, some of our students at our fac faculty on 2017, but as the event could not be celebrated face-to-face, uh, -face, we decided to uh, publish special uh, content on feminism and gender studies, as well as this poster, a feminist lexicon, which is, by the way, part of a project in course called Tapping into the Epistemic Advantage in Feminist Translation Practice. So, let's see some of the results obtained after the publication and presentation of the website. The first thing we did was a survey uh, completed by the attendees because we wanted to know their opinion. I have selected some of the questions and results that I think they were more uh, representative for the project and or that helped us to improve. The first question selected was what aspect of the website do you appreciate the most? It was a multiple uh, choice question, and the majority of them prefer the theoretical, theoretical and practical approach of the project, while um, the, other, the rest of them uh, value the easy navigation of the website and the compilation of multimedia tools for self-learning. And then we asked them what type of material are you most interested in and our students prefer learning resources followed by tutorials webinars uh, so that led us to think that autonomous learning could be put into practice secondly we asked them what aspect they valued when searching for bibliographical resources more than half of them uh, 51.1 percent appreciated that the words um, were multidisciplinary and connected for the visual translation with other forms of translation, while 29.5 percent opted for the, um, those resources enabling their self-learning again, and the rest prefer bibliography useful for the, uh, their essays uh, or um, that resources that were recent and international. When choosing the preferred aspect of the presentation session, 
the connection between academia and the professional world was selected by uh, a 35.2% uh, of the attendees. And a 74.1% recognized to feel motivated towards this type of complement, uh, complementary activities. Uh, students have the possibility to write a short text describing what they like the most about the session. Uh, so here's some of the comments. Uh, it's written in Spanish because I wanted to copy them just literally. But um, they especially valued the meeting of, uh, with a professional translator and to have learned from his real experience. So that makes us think that students need more activities focused on their future career. So when asking them if they plan to use the website in the future, uh, we can see that most of them uh, responded positively. And what uh, when asked them, and when they asked them what for, they said uh, self learning, easy finding of materials, and support for exercises and dissertations. Finally, they were invited to send us any suggestions to improve. And well, mm, I, we still have to work on some of them, but we took note and we did some of them, like uh, trying to have a better presence in. Uh, social network and of course having the participation of students so yeah. as a final result our team published three different works on abt as a tool for teaching other forms of translation the first one is the book titled audiovisual translation from an inter interdisciplinary and didactic approach the second one was a publication resulted from a panel presented in the Conference on Learning Innovation, FIDICO. Um, and the third one was an ebook titled Audiovisual Translation as, uh, and its didactic application. This ebook contains some of the posters originally published in the website, together with the webinars dealing with the same subject. So let's see a quick overview of the Final result, as you can see, is a flip book. So personally, I think uh, it looked uh, quite nice. So you can see all the posters, and um, the most of them are uh, visible together with the with the corresponding poster. So to conclude with. Uh, we can say that the creation of a multimedia environment um, so familiar to the generations of students is a great attraction and a stimulation for the work in the classroom. And this fosters the development of skills such as video editing, the use of software, the ability to create, to interpret information uh, through different codes of meaning, to work autonom autonomously, and also to work as a member of a team and encourages the simulation of a real work environment, which is of great help to prepare students for the future entry into the professional market. We hope to do a continuation and expansion of the project in the future, so new sections may be implemented and all suggestions are, of course, welcome. We also hope to organize new activities, especially when we can do face-to-face -face, uh, events instead of virtual events. And we are happy to receive any contributions or information to be shared and hope to strengthen connections with, to the professional world. Um, but we, are, we still have to work on new interviews, collaborations and registration of personal blogs and websites uh, of professional translators. So all the contributions are welcome. Um, then I would like to share with you all the um, works that I have used for this presentation. And again, thank you for being here today. And I hope you you like the the presentation. And if you have any question, I will be happy to answer. 
Thank you so much, Mar. Uh, I think this has been really interesting and informative. Thank you for sharing with us um, all these secrets behind Strada, which I think is really interesting. And also congratulations. I think I've told you already, but uh, uh, being a teacher, uh, I think this is great for our students. Also the way you have involved the students and, and how they've been working and contributing with uh, their work. I think this is really, really nice. Um, I, I'm always really worried about motivating students in class and also especially in these times, in this context, they are really, they really need something to be extra motivated. So I think this can really help. And once again, um, once again, con congratulations, because I think you've done a really great work with Tradap and I really hope uh, you can continue uh, this really nice project. And now we have some time for questions. So please, if you want to raise your hands, if you want to use the chat box, if you want to uh, ask uh, any question or share any kind of comment uh, with uh, our speaker. I think it was Blanca. Okay, hey, Blanca. <laughs> so thank you, Mar. I, I learned a lot, even though I was familiar with Trada, but you showed us many things that I wasn't aware of. So thank you for this, as Carla said, very informative presentation. And my question regards this example you showed of a student who shared her AD, this practice, I wanted to know whether you have any requirements in terms of the kind of material that you um, that you are receiving. So, for example, if we do something in class, um, would you only be interested in, let's say, very good quality practices or are errors also welcome? Let, let's say to um, illustrate some kind of errors in audiovisual translation or I don't know, um, I mean, room for improvement for future learners. I don't know, do you have requirements or are you just interested in enriching this database that you have? Thank you. Well, thank you, Blanca, for the question. Um, well, to be honest, I didn't plan to I use it in such an open way at the beginning, but as I said, this year I needed to think of something to motivate them. Um, I do publish uh, everything personally, so um, the filter, let's say, is me. <laughs> so they can voluntarily um, send them, send me the the practices. So. Normally, they ask me before and they, they consult me when, when they have any idea. Like, uh, like I'm mad, I'm thinking about writing about this topic. So I try to help them and to assess them in some way. So they are not working alone. I'm working with them. And in this practice, this actual practice uh, on AD was uh, carried out in, in the classroom. So it was the student who told me that she wanted to write a post. I reviewed uh, her practice and I thought it was quite good. So that's why I told her that it was okay. So yeah, it's it's some it's, it's a kind of, it's so a bit tricky if if they can publish anything with errors. But uh, I try to to revise all the. Uh, the material before it's published and, and I do it. Great. I, I think it's, um, I mean, if, if they write a blog post, then it's um, one thing and, and I get it that you do this quality control and, and I think that works very well. But I think it would also be interesting for teachers teaching audiovisual translation to have this bench where you just have practices of students, even though they contain errors because I mean, perhaps this would be quite easy to implement in Tradab in the way that you have it now with no specific quality control. And I think that would be also a very interesting resource for, I don't know, maybe everyone in this room <laughs> listening to you today. Thank you. Just as an so, idea for the future. So, well, well, I think I'll talk to you about that because I think maybe a good idea, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I think we haven't talked about this, but yeah. Yeah, I think that, so I'm, I'm open to any uh, inspiration. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, thank you. 
any other question or comments? I was also thinking, uh, for example, if uh, if someone has a question, I will stop. But I was just thinking. Um, so, do you find like because uh, sometimes that I I was thinking that you may be like uh, suggesting topics for the students or something because uh, that's what I was um, having doubts about, like how you uh, motivate students in the sense of. Uh, you need to write about something or like do you give them the specific topics do you give them like specific um, suggestions or ideas or are you open yeah. for any kind of yeah feedback? sometimes we do um because we have to think that this uh course was taught in the first semester and um everyone was like kind of i don't know maybe it's let's say sad <laughs> so um, i try to to um, encourage them and open um i open discussions in moodle so i had like five topics maybe to okay. so they could write down their opinions mm -hmm. suggestions and some of the posts are written by maybe five six authors because they um send their uh, ideas and I wrote a collaborative post, but then they were also open to, they were invited to send me their suggestions too. Okay. So a student uh, wrote an email to me saying, I want to study uh, the translation of songs. So okay. that was fine to me and, and we published that. And Maria de los Angeles is actually saying that you are quite flexible and yeah. they <laughs> Yeah, she wrote a post and it was her idea, original idea. She said, I'm very interested on in the translation of Harry Potter, which is, by the way, more, one of the most visited uh, posts. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's it's quite flexible. Um, and she's mentioning the, the, um, like the huge topic, the idea of how to enter the professional world. And I think you can definitely do more activities in that respect. Like maybe you can add more because the most difficult thing in my uh, in my opinion from now is like to give the project like some continuity, like continue like adding information and yeah. because you will always uh, be able to add resources and bibliography and references and new projects. But um, probably yeah, this kind of more into the professional world activities or seminars or what you mentioned before like presentations or any kind of uh, help for students yeah. to, to get more experience in the professional world or a better idea of the professional world yeah in fact that was written by many of the students in the survey they wanted more uh, training conferences but um, this was created as a very small project <laughs> so we expect that, uh, to grow and be able to do such things um, so mm -hmm. i'll work on that i hope so great yeah no it's it's there are many good ideas regarding that uh someone else has raised their hands i think i heard something but Hi, uh, Mar, thank you, uh, thank you very much. It was uh, amazing. I checked your website early September or something like that. So we already used your documentary uh, on how to translate documentaries in, in the class and it was it was really good. But I just checked that you have added many, many things. So I'll have to, to look, look around. And I have one question regarding um, the YouTube video Blanca was mentioning earlier. Um, have you thought of having any problems regarding rights? Because that's one of the things that I usually doubt on. Um, how, because my students also prepare some videos, but I don't give them the option to publish them because I'm not sure how um, fair or how, if they will have, if they will have, oh, sorry whether there would be any problems regarding um, uh, rights and so on. I don't know. I would like to get to know what you think about it or your experience. Thank you. Well, thank you, Irene, for the question. Um, I haven't actually have any, had any problem. I think because we tried to just use material that was open on YouTube. So um, that that's 
uh, mainly the reason why we thought that there was no problem and the original audio was not there and it was used just for didactic purposes. So yeah, we didn't have any problem, but we tried to, as I said, just use small uh, videos um, that were available on, on internet. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question, comment? Thank you, Maria Jose. Thank you. Well, Manuel, as I said, well, I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, many people saying it was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the chat box. Any other comment, suggestion for the project to continue? Any other question that you may have? So, Mark, yeah. that is going to be open for any collaboration yeah. from outside the University of Cordoba, right? Like, yeah, that was what I wanted to say. Uh, yeah, we are. Uh, we hope to keep on working with the website. So, if anyone in any moment uh, just wants to contact me and have any information published on the website, um, we'll be happy to to do it. Great. And also maybe you want to ask or you know, for another project or something like continue with more projects to have funding or whatever you need to continue with the, as you mentioned before, a small project in the beginning, but probably you can keep yeah. working. Yeah, Irene says that we would like the project. <laughs> thank you, Irene. Well, thank you so much, Mark, and also Blanca and everyone for organizing this group and, and this uh, opportunity of having seminars um, at different universities. Uh, everyone is saying thank you. I'm just reading the messages in case we're missing something. Yeah, I'm reading. Yeah. Well, Francisco, he's. Um, one of my colleagues at the University of Alicante, he's actually writing his PhD this, this dissertation on AVT research in this case. So um, it's going to be interesting for him and also for his classes as well. And yeah, Juan Pedro. Well, thank you. And uh, as, as we thank you, John and Alejandro. Um, this video will be uploaded with subtitles uh, really soon. And uh, Sometime soon, in the, probably in the summer, we'll have our third seminar, so we'll let you know. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we hope to see you in the next Colnet uh, seminar. And have a great day, and thank you, Mar, once again, for joining us at the University thank of Thank you, Carla, Park. for organizing this, and um, all of you for being here for one hour. <laughs> and you can be sure that we will be using your materials and everything at the Trada project. I hope so. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. COST, European Cooperation in Science and Technology. This video is based upon work from COST Action LEADME CA19142, supported by COST, European Cooperation in Science and Technology. COST, European Cooperation in Science and Technology, is a funding agency for research and innovation networks. Our actions help connect research initiatives across Europe and enable scientists to grow their ideas by sharing them with their peace. This boosts their research, career and innovation. www.cost.eu This work is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, CC BY, funded by the Horizon 2020 Framework Programme of the European Union.